Hey everyone, I'm here with Michael Springthorpe for this episode of uh, After Laughter. Say hello to everyone, Michael. Great. Hello to everyone, Michael. Uh, hey. uh, we're going to be reviewing one of your sets that you did at Wara. I do really like this set. So I do want to start uh, with the elephants in the room. I am six foot four inches tall. Hold your applause. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, now that we've gotten how, asked how gorgeous. I like starting with that because it is way too bold. I think <laughs> there, that is not earned whatsoever. I like that the impulse would be like, I'm, I'm a big character and I'm just gonna bang you right now. It plays into like, this is the character I'm gonna be doing. Like I am, I'm a hot and I know it and I'm gonna let you know. I wonder what the total number of, of brags are in this set. Maybe that'll be our fun extra counter for this episode. I am six foot four inches tall. <laughs> Now that we've gotten past how gorgeously tall I am, a um, couple other things about me. Um, I just, there may not be as apparent, so I just want to get them out there. I like this bragging. I do feel like your ums a little bit are breaking up the, the swag of this brag personality. <laughs> the swag of the brag? Yeah, that's that's how I talk. Uh, <laughs> ultimately, the correction is I just work on that out in my everyday life, but I refuse. <laughs> a couple other things about me. Um, I just, there may not be as a parent, so I just want to get them out there. Uh, I'm gay and I'm from Florida. <laughs> um, maybe it was obvious because of my hat, the fact that I hold my wrist like this, and also I'm gay. Um, Love that, Mr. X. Love that joke. How do you feel about it? It's good. It is yours. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. What I doubly love about that joke is uh, we say, like, I'm from Florida, and we inset the idea of the, the wrist way before the tagline hits. Uh, I'm gay and I'm from Florida. <laughs> I'm gonna let you know yeah. like, why yeah, I'm saying that. There's two levels of information. There's the verbal and the physical. And I like that we're sort of priming the audience with the physical before we use it for a verbal punchline. Yeah, there's a lot of physical in this one too. I do like cutesy moves. Ooh, and we can have a, a cutesy counter, a, a kawaii counter. <laughs> I just, it's important for me to say it because it's just where most of my comedy comes from. Some comedians, they're children of divorce. Some comedians have depression. I've sucked a dick in a swamp. <laughs> Boom. Love that Boom. joke. Boom. It's great. It's simple. I've sucked a dick in a swamp. And the structure Perfect. of that joke of like, some comedians have blah, 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 this. Some comedians have all of this. I've sucked a dick in a swamp. I honestly can't think of many ways to improve, like not even joking, that punchline. And also a beach, uh, and also a Walmart parking lot. Those, those were all within 500 feet of each other. But don't worry, boys. I'm not a slut. It was all with the same guy. His name was Nine Inch Uncut Can't Host. The gays will get that. I was surprised by how big of a laugh that got. Nine Inch Uncut It Can't Host, because that is like, people will be named that on Grindr. Yeah. And maybe I was being closed-minded to think like, oh, only the gays will gotcha. really appreciate this. Dating apps and weird people on them is universal enough that uh, that even people out of the loop can sort of still enjoy that joke with you. The only thing I don't like about that joke is the way we structure it, we're like, hold, 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 wait up audience, is it sort of like stifles a laugh. Those were all within 500 feet of each other. Love it. <laughs> but don't worry, boys. I'm yeah, the, see, the audience wanted to laugh a little bit longer, and it like... Yeah, that, yeah, that comes with surfing, the, the laughs. His name was Nine Inch Uncut Can Host. <laughs> the gays will get that. Uh, and if you want to talk to me after the show, I'll be the guy in the back of the audience with his sleeves rolled up because they don't reach my wrists. Because <laughs> I am six foot four, thank you. <laughs> I lean back into that kind of like character I established. Or rather, the last time I really leaned into that character was when I was saying that I was six foot four. Yeah. So it's almost like yeah. a sense memory. I keep seeing you like smiling at yourself, you're laughing at yourself. And so we play this like braggadocious character, which could be off putting, but you're sort of like, eh, it's fine. Right? We're a fine audience. We're good. It's fine. It's good. Eh, maybe I'm a little bit of a dick. It's okay. I, I like to imagine it as like a veneer that's just cracked slightly, where it's like you can yeah. see. Like my actual face underneath is smiling with you. Sorry about Florida. Um, Florida is kind of almost a paradise. It's like almost there. It's like that uh, country road song, but worse. Um, <laughs> Forget that audience. That's a good joke. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I don't think I had that written in. Actually, you know what? It might have been improvised in the moment when I was rehearsing it. You tell people when they rehearse 
and I do this myself, is like, you rehearse once, like line perfect, movement perfect, to just like get the muscle memory in case you, you go up or you zone out in the middle of your set, and then right after you rehearse once, improvising and paraphrasing everything. And so you can find those jokes that you didn't necessarily write in. Someone was trying to recreate California, but uh, they didn't remember it very well. I love it, it's a very simple premise. You're about to do a huge, big, like minute long bit off of this, just this very simple sentence that got a laugh in itself. I think it's a great premise and, and an, an easy setup that's very relatable and easy to understand. It gives the audience a map immediately. <laughs> they, were like, they were like, oh yeah, this beach is right. Oh shit, we forgot to make the waves big enough to surf on. Okay, we'll try again. All right, uh, there's a town called Hollywood, right? Ah, shit. The only famous person from this one is Josh Gad, the poor man's Jack Black. Ah. Okay, let's try it one more time. All right, there's a Disney, right? Oh. How do we think our first two minutes went? Really good. I mean, there's you know little spots that I think could have been cut down either on ums or wordiness maybe. Uh, but not too, too many. We gotta laugh every six seconds, which is great. And it's about 37.5% audience reaction. So 30% is the bar of like, oh, this is a pretty good set. We are way above that. And it's especially hard to get that at the beginning of a set because the audience is just getting to know you. So I think all these big things that we're doing, all these very well-structured jokes, uh, we're, we're moving very fluidly, even despite the ums. Boys. You want to talk to me after the show, I'll be the one in the back with the really well-structured jokes and the sleeves rolled up because they don't reach my wrists. He'll be the one in the YouTube comments with the really... <laughs> Let's try it one more time. All right, there's a Disney, right? Oh, shit, we only made it 50 times the size with four more parks, 12 times the hotels, and a fucking monorail! I love that joke. How do you feel about that joke? <laughs> well, because we're about to... screenshot up my face. Oh, oh, this one right here, though. <laughs> <laughs> Love the high energy, the audience matches your energy, which is the only way to get a laugh that big is to, to find a natural way to grow. I get really aggressive with it, but I think what's really important about this one is I'm never getting aggressive at the audience because it's kind of established already. I'm getting aggressive at the concept of Disneyland, which granted works well in a New York audience. <laughs> <laughs> it allows us all to be on the same side against a common enemy. And a fucking monorail, boy! Oh, yeah, fuck you, me, Disneyland! If you can take a California adventure up my ass! Oh, yeah. I'd like to see you drink around the world, bitch! <laughs> Got a lot of pride for Florida, for a Disney World in Florida. Yeah, I like that, I like that breather of just like, the show, okay. Boys, I'll be the guy in the back with uh, the lifetime full of magical memories and the sleeves rolled up because they don't reach my wrists. And that's, that's the continuing um, of the so building on bit that we'll see later. Enough about Florida, let's move on to gay. Um, <laughs> Love that's the simple the simplicity of let's move on to gay. Yeah, it's using the word incorrectly. Uh, there are implicit rules that we all have uh, and that we all know with language. When you subvert the, any rules, you know, you're gonna get a laugh. That's what comedy is. And so I'm subverting a rule and I don't even need to give you a fucking setup because you got it in your brain, bitch. Yeah, I love that. Just being like, me dumb. It's like simple stuff like that. Cause Bonnie's like, ah, oh, that's not how language works. I've been gay for about 24 and a half years. Thank you, I am young. <laughs> um, Cheatsy. Hold your applause again. Uh, but uh, I only need- Yeah, how do you feel about that? Hold your applause again. And the audience is like, oh, okay. <laughs> hold your applause again. I feel good about it because they listened to me. <laughs> it didn't work great the first time, and it, the second time was super late, and they forgot about the first time, yeah, yeah. so it wasn't it doesn't even get callback points. So that's one of the hard things about being stand-up, is like you have to do the set, you have to have this personality, but you also have to be judging, like, okay, that joke landed, so I can call that back, but that joke didn't land, so like I have to burn it for the rest of the set. And it's just like that thing of you can spend years and years trying to master that in the moment, like battlefield knowledge or whatever. The last four years, I know, shocking. Um, uh, my mom also claims that she had no idea growing up. And then you look back at pictures of me when I'm in like elementary school, and I'm like dressing up in all pink, and I'm wearing her high heels, and I'm covered in sparkles, 
They're drinking iced coffee, they're doing poppers, and I can't maintain a relationship for a week. And it's like, there were signs. Um, How do you feel about that uh, sort of rhythm joke? I can cut the sparkles one. It's just a little bit too much going slow at the very beginning and I don't speed up fast enough. Yeah, the audience doesn't get the pattern of this is gonna speed up, because you're like, same speed, same speed. So the audience doesn't know if the third one is supposed to speed up or not, so we haven't incepted that idea of this is yeah, the inherent. I broke the rule of threes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gay? <laughs> Yikes! Uh... <laughs> wow. Uh... I love that reaction because like you had to respond and somehow your resolution to that tension gets like, a huge laugh and you've added personality to it So you've done two big good stand-up tenants in this one moment uh, on the fly, which is amazing Wow, first of all, I'm sorry uh, Second of all, I do, I, I kind of want to extend an olive branch to all you fucking straights uh, out there um, uh, I want to let you all know a little bit about what it's like to be gay um, So I found in my experience a lot of gays, uh, we have height preferences when dating. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Some, some of the straight women out there are also like, yes. Yes, six feet. Uh, same. Uh, but uh, the thing about gay- Okay, great, so we are now in our second two minutes. How do we feel the second two minutes have gone? Start off just on fucking fire. Yeah, because the, the Disney thing was just like such a, like, audience crushing bit. We had a laugh every five seconds as opposed to every six seconds in the first two minutes. And the audience has been reacting for about 44% of the time. So like way above that 30% bar. Even despite this this end bit sort of like lagging more because that Disney was just like, ah, oh, killer. Uh, th this is it's just great, great, amazing stand-up. Uh, it's just really good. Any, any, Perfect, any beautiful, stunning. Amazing, wow. it's above six foot four. Just so that we can share clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just so that we can share clothes, and then the thing is, the seasons change, you break up, you move on. Uh, I dated a guy last year, last summer, because we wore the same size shorts. Then it got turned to fall, it got chillier, and I had to break up with him because I couldn't fit into any of his jackets with these broad shoulders of mine. <laughs> Cutesy and your braggadocious character. Love that punchline. The setup for that joke started as soon as I started talking yep. out in the set, in a way. As we go through a set, we're slowly teaching the audience new information, and it's up to us whether we want to leverage that right now on an immediate punchline, or whether we want to leverage it in a, at a later at a later time. And I love when setups happen like minutes before punchlines, instead of always just like, set up, uh, set up, uh, 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 uh. Say in the gay community, if the shoe fits, swipe right. <laughs> So if you want to talk to me after the show, well, there aren't any gays, so that joke's kind of fucked. Uh, but, um, if you want to text- That was a really long laugh, and I, I like it. So we sort of have written ourselves into a corner here because this joke builds on itself, but now we've of course established that like, oh fuck, it's not gonna work. But we called it out, which is which is great, but how do you feel about this, like all the combinations of things that just happened? Obviously these are all ha things happening in the moment. I like to think that when I'm doing this, you kind of have to have like, two sides of your, of your brain on because on one side I'm reading out the script of what I wrote and on the other side I'm watching and listening to the audience and play, I'm improvising live. If I had just done the script, someone in the audience would have been like, Okay, well, we already know there aren't any gay people. I think it's 100% you have to acknowledge it. You have to potentially like audible or change this bit that you've written. And it's one of the things that makes stand up so hard to master is that like anything can happen and your written material might need to go out the window or suddenly you have to lean very heavily on improv. And I think it's it's very strong of how you are in the moment now. Your gay yeah. friends, ladies, uh, they want to talk to me after the show, I'll be the guy in the back. Perfect way of like fixing it. Uh, the lifetime mm -hmm. full of magical memories and the sleeves rolled up because they don't reach my wrists. Uh, another thing about gays, at least my gay friends. Yeah, that was, that was uh, me getting out of that joke. <laughs> yeah, that was like, I have to do this game. <laughs> 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 yeah. We love Game of Thrones. How many people love Game of Thrones? Love a good pander. How many people love the last season of Game of Thrones? Yikes. Uh, ooh, just as many gays. Uh, so, uh... Love, love all that stuff that of course is improvised because it just happened. I came into stand-up having done improv first already for like a couple years. So I was A, already comfortable on stage, and B, knew how to like play this fiddle a little bit. Oh my gay friends, we love Game of Thrones, but our favorite character was Cersei. Yeah. And that, yes, yes, bitch. Uh, 
that is because gays, at least my friends, uh, my gay friends, we love a woman with a lot of power who does not know how to handle it well. Yeah. Think about all the gay icons. Lisa Vanderpump, Cher, Laura Dern in Big Little Lies, Miss, Miss Piggy, all of them. A lot of women with no composure. Yeah. Daenerys, she was great, but I never- Miss Piggy was overkill. I wrote Miss Piggy, and then Laura Dern you, in you Big Little Lies happened. I added that one in, and I don't know why I didn't catch like, hmm, there's four things here, it should be three. Should've kind of. Daenerys, she was great, but I never really liked her that much until that last episode where she burned down a whole fucking city for no goddamn reason. That was camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, you know what? I've been being silly up here, mostly because of my homosexuality. Um, I want to get serious for a minute, because it is a comedy show. Um, I want to like give some recognition to some people. Great. This is the third two minutes. How do we feel about this? This is the most uh, stable. This is about on, on par with the first two minutes. You have a laugh about every 5.2 seconds, which is faster than the first two minutes, but the audience has been reacting for about 38% of the time, so about the same as that. We're just still above that, that good threshold, uh, e even with some of the lulls that we've had in the past two minutes. So it's, it's still great. All the writing is great. All the ideas are, are simple enough that, that they, they land hard. Here we go into the final two and a half minutes. Uh, so I want to do some shout outs. So the way this works, uh, growing up, the way I did shout outs in my family and my friends, uh, I would go, I've got a shout out, and then everyone would say, shout out. So we'll practice. So I'll say, I've got a shout out. You'll all say shout out. Ready? I've got a shout out. Shout out. I love that we're teaching this bit to the audience very simply. It's, it's audience interaction. You're making them implicit in it. You're making them loud so they'll be more likely to be loud to laugh. I, I love bits like this. It gets the audience involved and they are a part of the bit just as much as I am. But also it's simply more fun as a human being to deliver this information, doing this shout out. Anyone can take this shout out yeah. formula for themselves. It's super fun. This is such a simple bit that has such a universal application that you could do a different version of this on every set that you do. This could be this could be my fucking hot pockets. Yeah. I've got a shout out to the audience for being such good listeners. Wow, yeah, give a round of applause for yourself. Okay, well, let's move on to the real shout outs. Um, I've got a shout out. Got a shout -out. <laughs> Love it, if it's the character. The only time I'm on the audience's side in the entire set, the only time I'm ever nice to those motherfuckers and I pull the rug out from underneath them instantly. I, I think as, uh, as long as we keep a little bit, maybe a little bit more wink smile at the audience than we had there, uh, I, I, I still think, I, as a comedian, I like it. Scaffolding, yeah, it helps renovate buildings, right? You can do pull-ups on it if you are in shape, right? Anybody seen anybody doing pull-ups on scaffolding and you can get out of your goddamn way? Yeah. I like scaffolding because when it's raining outside, I go under the scaffolding when I'm walking down the sidewalk and I can text without my phone getting wet. Yeah, it's one of the only places, you don't think about it. Um, all right, I got another shout out. This one's a shout out to the Lincoln Tunnel. Who here lives in Jersey? Whoosh. With all the straights, a different answer, but whatever. Um, who here has friends in Jersey? There we go. We sort of have standards. Um, I have lots of friends in Jersey. Uh, I prefer to take the Lincoln Tunnel into Jersey than the path. Um, and the reason why is the Lincoln Tunnel has cell reception, so I can text. Um, I got one more shout out. This was a shout out to Express Trains. Who lives off of an express stop? Yeah. Who lives off a local stop? Well, I'm sorry for when you have to go home after this show. <laughs> Hope you have four hours planned. I love express stops. I love Whoa, how do you feel about that moment? I'm a little surprised I don't say something in the moment about it. Ultimately, my character is not this braggadocious guy. The character is me who's on the audience's side and is the audience's friend pretending to oh. be the bragging guy. Yeah. And I break that character by not going back to the friend. Yeah. You know, the veneer never cracks in that because I go- Oh yeah, yeah good point. Huh, hope you fucks have a lot, have, you yeah. know, have a good time getting home tonight. It's a very real like nervous thing that people have, especially on late shows. Like you can feel audiences 
pull back once a show goes past like 11, 30, 12 o'clock. They are worried about like, I'm gonna get home, and I'm gonna sleep. And so you've, you've brought this very, very real tension that people are actually thinking of. And you've sort of just like, and I'm gonna leave it in the room and fuck you for thinking of it. And so it's, it's really hard to get any sort of laugh or reaction after that just because the audience is then like, yeah, I do have to get home after this. And that is really far. They get me where I need to go way faster than a fucking uncle train. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry for you people. Um, but you know what? Rent is expensive. Um, I. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. This, this, yeah, this is one of those moments where it's like, it's like, it's, it's, it's now entering like bad open mic territory. We're like, we've, we've attacked the audience. They sort of could have forgiven us. We've then like doubled down. We're trying to dig ourselves out, but we're not really being that friend to the audience. So it's, it's just like us. Yeah, Mike, have another shovel. Yeah, yeah, it's just like us trying to flail and be like, what's something? Please. He's like me. I'm tall, I'm young, and I'm rich. Please laugh. Um... <laughs> There you go. I think I think that's back to the I'm friend pretending to be braggadocious moment, like you like you said. One of my best things about express trains is as they're going down, they get you where you need to go a lot faster. But as they're going past the local stops, bitch, they get reception, so you can text. Thank you so much, I'm Michael. If you need to talk to me after the show, I'll be the guy texting you. It's, Cut this guy off. Yeah, it, it's almost one of those things where it's like, it's hard to, well, yeah, the, the sound person didn't know that we were going to do this this big build at the end to, to pay off that. But I, I feel like we lost the audience with the text joke, so it's almost like weird to like try to get that last laugh. A better choice almost would have been for me to be like, <sighs> I really whiffed it on that one when I yeah. insulted huh? Wasn't it funny when I said suck the dick in a swamp? Oh, thank you, Michael's yeah. first yeah. I feel like that would have been a, a great way to just like end it, get off stage if you yeah. feel like, I need to get off stage now, which I feel a little bit you're, you, you've like, you've like pressed the, like, I'm gonna go and try to get this last bit out of my mouth. That's the, you know, the one side of my brain that's reading the script. That's oh, yeah. it, be panicking, being like, well, I have to say the rest of the script. Yeah. If you need to talk to me after the show, I'll be back texting Chris. Great, so how do we feel this last two and a half minutes went? I mean, it can't have gone better. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so we got a laugh about every 6.25 seconds, which is still fast considering how we had a huge lull in there. But yeah, the audience is only reacting for about 26.7% of the time. So it's below that 30% like good stand-up bar because we had that one sort of faux pas with the audience, which is fine. But the Even a bad game for LeBron is still a fantastic game. Oh, <laughs> I am comparing myself to LeBron. What are your do's and don'ts for this set? Do know your stage persona and do play within its boundaries. Don't <laughs> directly insult the audience. They say is like when it comes to insulting people and the audience is in comedy, you can insult what groups of people do, but you can't insult who they are. Don't make fun of the fact that they live off a fucking local stomp. Looking at this set as a whole, the good portions brought the average up despite the one uh, sort of like train wreck area. So overall, uh, <laughs> overall a great set. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we wrap this episode? You can fit all of Disneyland and its parking lot inside the parking lot of Magic Kingdom. Oh.